Hello and welcome to another quick look. This time I'm taking a look at the Warhammer quest by uh, Rode Games. It was originally made uh, by Games Workshop in 1995 uh, and it's a tabletop board game which was a successor for the Hero Quest and Advanced Hero Quest, which were some of my favorite games in my childhood, but I never actually played uh, the Warhammer Quest itself ever. So it's a bit of a nostalgia trip for me to play this game. And uh, it was uh, made into a PC, uh, sorry, not a PC game, but an iOS game on uh, 2013 by Rody Games. And uh, it was now uh, released on PC, which is a port from the iOS version. And uh, it's actually a pretty decent game. Uh, but there has been a lot of complaints about the game prior to the release already, and uh, uh, at the release as well. Uh, about the pricing and uh, how it is very much a port from the iOS version and also uh, has all the pricing models and all the troubles that are plaguing the whole mobile games scene. And let me show you the additional content, which is the troublesome part of about that. So, in addition to the game costing $15 uh, on uh, uh, Steam at the moment, uh, for the base version and for uh, the deluxe version it's $30, uh, you also have uh, all of these uh, in-game purchases, not even DLC, just uh, in-game purchases. And uh, as you can see, uh, my prices are in euros at the moment, of, because I'm in the eurozone, so you can see that these are actually fairly expensive. Uh, so there's the warrior packs, you have uh, seven additional characters you can buy, uh, in addition to the four you have in the base game. Uh, then you have these region packs, which actually come uh, with the PC version. These are uh, bundled on the PC version, uh, and on iOS you have to buy them separately, they are uh, $5. And then you have legendary weapons, which are basically a dollar each, or a, a bit less on uh, euros. Well, same price, anyways. And then you have dungeon packs, and uh, one of these uh, vampires and zombies comes on the PC version with the game. And you need to uh, buy the other ones, the skeletons and the uh, necromancer, separately. So basically, people have been complaining that the iOS version is $5 for the base game, and it's $15 uh, on the PC. But actually, the PC version, uh, as it has the region packs, which are $10 in total, plus the dungeon pack, which is $3, it's actually a bit che uh, cheaper, but you have to dish out more money yeah, up front to get into the game. So it's basically $3 cheaper than getting these separately on the iOS. But the big issue I have with the game, and many other people have with the game, is having to buy all these additional characters for $3 each, or whatever euros it is, as you can see here, which will be $21 extra on top of that. And uh, it's starting to cost quite a lot of money. And then you have these pay-to-win weapons, the legendary weapons, which are seriously OP weapons that you get immediately at the start of the game, and you can pretty much ruin your game just by buying these and having OP characters to start with. And the deluxe version actually gives you everything, and it's actually the best value out of all of these options. So, $15 uh, for the base game, 21 for all the characters and all the, all the other stuff, is way more than $30, uh, that's the base deluxe version. So if I was to get the game, I would uh, definitely go for the deluxe version and just ignore the whole in-game app purchase bullshit and all that. But that's basically what a lot of people have been complaining about the game. And I, I do agree that uh, these characters are way overpriced. And all this other stuff as well. They should have just released the game as a one package and just have everything bundled instead of having a deluxe version is, uh, as well available. And just uh, do whatever you want on the iOS. But on PC version, this should have gone bundled with the game. But anyways, that's about the pricing. It's pretty much on your own to decide which, uh, I mean, if you want to buy the game or not. As, as usual, of course. But uh, for me, uh, if you ignore all the uh, in-app purchases and just think that there's only the deluxe version, it's actually a pretty decent value. Uh, but let's get into the game so I can actually show you what the game itself is about. Because I actually like the game quite a lot. So let's uh, hop in there. So I have been playing the game a bit, so I'm gonna just hop in into my existing campaign and show you how that works. So in the campaign, or the 
game itself, you have this uh, world map here, which is uh, in the Empire region, if you have know the game, in the old world. And uh, there's uh, three different regions, so this is basically the base game uh, on iOS, where you just have the one region, and you have uh, nine quests, mainline uh, quests in there, and these are the additional two regions that you can buy on iOS, or which come bundled on the PC, so in total you have uh, all these main quests in this game. But in, other, in addition to that, you have random dungeons, which are these. So the red one is uh, one of the main quests. You can see that there is a uh, quest line here. It says uh, recommended level and showed me what enemies there are. And then you have these uh, random quests that have random enemies and random rewards. Like this one has silver bullets, which is a quite nice upgrade for a witch hunter character. And you can repeat these as many times as you want. You can wander around and do these as many times as you want. Let's actually check this prize. Robes of the Grey College. So if you mouse over on that, you can actually see what it does. It's plus one power and it's for the Grey Wizard. So we might actually go there and grab that. So I'll show you uh, that mission. And uh, you also have these uh, towns here, or cities, where you can village, uh, uh, visit these villages and ta cities. And you can do some purchase here. And let's travel to Burbad for now, and I'll show you how you, these cities work. So these cities have this nice book animation, which kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones, or some uh, nice uh, children's storybooks where you flip the book open and you have this 3D landscape opening. It's really, really cool. It's a bit low graphics, because this is an iOS port, so a lot of these things, like graphics and animations, are... Still, uh, even in the PC version, they are quite low resolution and they weren't really uh, upscaled or uh, upgraded at all when they ported this to the PC. So this is the city and uh, here's my all my characters. Uh, I have all of them unlocked because uh, I have the deluxe pack package. And in here you can do um, shopping at the marketplace where you can buy uh, all kinds of items, armor, weapons, uh, consumables and things for your heroes and uh, you can also sell your uh, garbage items which you loot from the dungeons so you get the money through that and this is actually another one uh, another thing that was really complained in the game that uh, you have this gold system in here so you need to buy things from the village uh, healing potions and those and some of these actually do cost quite a lot and then you have this up here and if you have played any of the mobile games, you pretty much know what this plus means. If you click on that, you can buy money with real money. But actually, uh, what I have played the game and what uh, I read uh, from other people's comments, uh, this is actually not necessary at all. Uh, you can pretty much endlessly grind money if you want, and you can get money fairly easily in the game, so you don't actually need to buy these at all if you uh, just want to play the game as it is. So you can ignore this pretty much totally. It should not have been in even included in the PC version, in my opinion. But anyway, it, it is there. So that's the marketplace. Then you have Adventure Guild, which uh, shows you these characters. You can see uh, uh, all your people here. You can retire them uh, to start leveling them up again from the beginning, which kind of sucks. <laughs> I have no idea why there is this option. But anyways, it is this there. And you can also look at your characters here. Then you have training grounds, and this is where you level up your characters. So they collect experience, there is uh, up to 6 levels for each character, and they get uh, stat upgrades and new abilities as they level up. And <laughs> you also get some random events, like there is this drug event now. So one of my dwarves got minus 1 toughness for one dungeon. So you get random events in cities and while you are also traveling, and in the dungeons as well, which can do good things and usually do bad things for you. So that's actually kind of annoying. Just by visiting different shops, th this happened to me. And you can actually lose a lot of money that way, and all kinds of really annoying things can happen from there. And then you have a temple here, where you can pray to make your uh, character blessed, and it helps you in the dungeons. Now, let's actually pray for the dwarf here. And he's meditating. So we get Gift of Battle. When activated, water against 2 melee attacks for a reminder of the round. That's actually quite nice. And we can go back. So that's what you do basically in the towns. Also, uh, usually when you visit the town first time, you get a, a quest there, which 
basically for that region. And uh, you get further quests when you done, uh, do that quest by visiting the same town again. But let's go adventuring. So I could go to another cities here and do some shopping there if I wanted. And all these cities have these uh, different uh, dungeons around them. Uh, but I think we are going to pick up a dungeon from here if the ropes of Grey College is still there and it's undates, so that's actually quite nice. So let's hop in there. So my guys, travel in the dungeon. And uh, when you enter a dungeon, you can select four characters out of these 11 uh, if you have them unlocked. Uh, in the base game, you only have uh, Bjorn. Uh, Hawkeye, Marius, and uh, Ungrim, so Ironbreaker, Moroder, Elf Wave Watcher, and Grey Wizard. And I'm gonna go with the uh, uh, Dwarf Troll Slayer, Witch Hunter, Grey Wizard, and uh, the Moroder. I, I kinda like this combination the best, but I've been playing. These other characters are also quite interesting. There's the uh, Archmage, Elf, uh, sh uh, Elf, uh, Shadow Warrior, Ogre, Iron God, uh, Bright Wizard. Uh, warrior priest, and this is an elf. Uh, the elf which are like a total order. But anyways, let's go with these, my highest level characters, and go wreck some undead in the dungeon. So there's all this lore you can read uh, whenever you enter dungeons and when you enter cities, and all these items uh, also have lore in them. So this is a uh, how the dungeons look. So it kind of looks like a hero quest or Warhammer quest board with these uh, sections where you are and it's style based so you can move your guys around here. So I'm just gonna move uh, my Marauders, uh, Marauder, uh, Troll, uh, uh, Troll Slayer and my Witch Hunter there and the Wizard can stay there. And you can end your turn once you're done with that. So my Wizard gets Winch of Change which is basically a spell uh, points for him. So he has 6 power now and you can see the spells here and they cost different ability uh, different amounts of the winch of uh, magic uh, for him and six is actually quite a lot which is nice because we are going to enter into this room and there might be monsters so we can actually start blasting spells immediately you can also mouse over on the characters to see their uh, stats their uh, hit points or wounds their experience the level and all that you can also uh, click here and you can leave the dungeon if you want to uh, but you can also check the journal, which uh, is basically an in-game guide, which tells you about all the heroes, like the Moroder, his uh, Berserk ability, Ignore Boon's abilities, and all this. So if you need to take a look at uh, what they can do, and what the ab ability actually does, you can quickly look through here. Uh, same on the enemies. As uh, you encounter the enemies in the dungeons, they get added in here. So this is a really good uh, way to check for information as needed. Uh, there is also some lore here, so if you are a a kind of love nerd on uh, Warhammer, you can uh, read through things here. Uh, although, if you're already a fluff nerd uh, on uh, Warhammer, you pretty much know all of this already. But anyways, it's a, it's a nice thing to look through. But let's uh, start going through this dungeon. So I ended the turn, so my guys have a fresh turn. Let's go in here. So it's actually not just a tunnel. Nothing in here. So let's keep going. And as you end your turn, there might be random spawns happening, and there is a random spawn. So I'm attack uh, being attacked by some five zombies and giant rats, which uh, spawn ar around you. They might spawn like behind here or something as well. Uh, especially necromancers have a tendency to appear behind you, which is kind of annoying. So, now we need to think how to deal with these. Also, these uh, spawns are really annoying because uh, they're kind of like a surprise attack. Which means uh, your uh, wizards don't have time to prepare for uh, you know, the enemies, so they don't get any magic points, which kind of sucks. Also, uh, having enemies uh, next to you makes you pinned, so you cannot actually move. So this wizard is kind of in a bad situation with all these enemies next to him. Uh, but good thing uh, he's actually a higher level, so he has uh, some power in reserve, so 80 magic points. So it, even though he has nothing to use at the moment, he can use still the eight points that are uh, per dungeon but they don't do not replenish until you have done the whole dungeon but I'm gonna just uh, throw some shadow deckers at the enemies here which actually probably yeah just hit the 
Rat in the first, but he missed. So let's do the Shadow Dagger. It's a nice AoE attack. So I'm gonna leave it at that for the mage. So then we have a. Let's go with the Troll Slayer next. So I would like to kill these enemies with Troll Slayer. Uh, also down here you can see the other information about the character. So this is the health points. Uh, how many range attacks he has, so zero at the moment, defense, and melee attacks. So if you look at the Witch Hunter, he has one range attack. So let's hit this guy. And miss. Let's try again. And miss. Well, that was a bad turn for him. Let's use the Marauder next. There we go, zombie dead. Uh, he has a range attack, but I don't have actually any uh, ranged weapon on him, so he cannot use the attack at all. And then it's pretty much the Witch Hunter's turn, so I'm gonna use a melee attack on him. Use a melee attack on him. And then you can also use the range attack, which uh, shows us the orange uh, instead of the red, that's the melee attack. So I'm just gonna blast that guy with my pistol. Also, Witch Hunters have uh, willpower, which is kinda same as the spell points for the wizard, but they come from kills and also plus 2 every turn, up to 12 I think. And you can use these abilities, and Witch Hunter is extremely good against undeads. And the bane of the undead is only 2 points, and it pretty much insta-kills all these uh, low level undeads. So he's just a powerhouse on these dungeons. There we go. So now we have only one rat left. You can also uh, mouse over on these to see what they do. So if you actually use your willpower, you do lose your weapon and ballistic skills and strength. Which, so you kinda wanna stockpile the willpower, but sometimes it's very good idea to just blast everything with that. So the giant rat has one attack, two hit points, not, not too bad. And also, uh, their attack is the death leap, and uh, you get a counter attack immediately on those rats. So the Troll Slayer just murdered the rat. And this pack gave me a uh, random loot, so money and this potion of strength, which I will add into my stash. And you can actually see your uh, inventory or stash in here. So this is the equipment your character has. So these are the heroes here on the side, and you can see what they are using. And this is your overall inventory, where you're gonna add items to your characters. Uh, when you are not in a combat. So let's give some uh, some bread to the dwarf. He has an axe, a nice plus strength ring and some toughness boots. And that's it pretty much. There's uh, three different types of items, so common items is usually like all the e simple consumables, basic gear, and then you have a bit better items like this uh, Scorch Helmet, which was a uh, a dungeon loot for the Marauder, for max uh, hit points. And then you have also the rare items, which are uh, pretty powerful items, like this uh, Lightning Fire Ring, which does uh, 5 to 30 damage on an enemy, a range attack. It's one time use uh, per dungeon, so it's actually pretty powerful. And uh, the wizards are fairly weak, and uh, it's kinda hard to level them up early on. So if you can give them something like this, you can actually get some kills for them fairly easily with the ring. At least one per dungeon and get them to level up. And when they level up, they get the power reserve, well, the 8 points uh, this wizard had. So they can actually start using the spells. The winch of uh, magic is kind of random and it often can screw you up and not give you enough points to actually cast any proper spells. There's also items like this uh, amulet of healing, which is a healing uh, amulet for one time use per dungeon for the witch hunter. There's a regeneration rings, there's plus uh, all stats and all kinds of stuff you can find as a random loot or a buy from the shops. So let's move these guys forward. So you can actually uh, pretty much move freely in the explored area without having any uh, encounters or anything, unless you get a random spawn. But uh, to actually progress, you need to go next to the tiles, next to the entrance. Unless you get this random spawn, of course. So, this area down here will be revealed when I actually hit these tiles. But let's deal with deal with these first. It's only a few skeletons. This troll slayer today seems to be missing everything. 
Uh, most of the warrior type characters have a death blow, so when they kill an enemy they will actually hit someone on the next tile as well, which can lead into silly combos like killing four enemies in one turn or something like that. Uh, the witch hunter should have the same ability if he actually hits the skeleton. Oh well, let's shoot that with the weapon. It's definitely not his turn. Uh, I mean, it's his day today. It's just a wizard to hit the skeleton. I didn't even kill it. Damn. And you can't do anything. I'm, I'm just gonna use the Bane to at least kill a couple of these. It's a good idea to try to prevent damage. Because healing items and healing is uh, very limited in the game. I'm gonna use the Shadow Dagger on this. It's gonna hit my guy, but it's less damage than the enemy would do. So there's a fire bomb. That's a consumable, throwable for a dwarves. And some money again. And let's end the turn. And now we can actually enter the room. So there we go. Six crypt zombies. So yeah, once I moved here, it spawns the enemies and shows you the next area. And there's the next ex exit. So it's kind of it's it's very much the same as the board game tiles in the uh, Hero Quest and in in uh, Advanced Hero Quest and uh, the Warhammer Quest. And it very well emulates that, and I'm getting a really nostalgic feeling playing this. So these script zombies are a bit tougher, they're like a second tire. Undeads, or uh, zombies, so they have a lot, lot more health, and they're actually quite nasty. So there we go, one down, and I'm gonna take a shot at one of these guys. There we go, that's actually quite a lot of damage from the shot. And let's do a Shadow Bolt. Shadow Bolt is an area effect spell for the Grey Wizard, so I'm gonna throw it there. It doesn't do too much damage, but it's quite good early on to just AoE down like a bunch of rats and bats and spiders that have a really low health. And it's actually a fairly good way to level up the uh, wizard as well. So my uh, Marauder just got Berserk, so he can attack once extra attack this turn and probably miss all of the attacks. Missing is very common in this game, so don't get frustrated if you miss. Especially some characters like the uh, Hawkeye, the elf uh, Wave Watcher, is actually surprisingly blind. Just cannot hit anything at all. There we go. We have only three points. Uh, I'm gonna. Just wait on the wizard. That's a bit annoying part uh, about the wizard because they just cannot sometimes do anything if randomly you don't get uh, enough uh, spell points. And in the middle of combat there is a skeleton warrior and a necromancer spawning. So the necromancer is very likely behind here. Yeah, there he is. So he has a ring of magic which gives him a shield against magic damage nice and he can use dark magic which actually is quite annoying plus we got the skeleton warrior so he's unstable any critical strike will instantly kill them nice that's actually the first time i've seen this enemy as well well let's try smacking that guy well there we go <laughs> critical blow and then miss oh well Let's move this guy up front. Nice, nicely done. Well, the miss is what well, not so nice, but otherwise quite nice. Then we are gonna go deal with the necromancer. Necromancers can be extremely annoying if you let them do stuff. Ah, great job. And I'm gonna be in the undead there. Just a lower their numbers. They can resurrect more uh, uh, undeads to fight you, they can heal undeads, and they also uh, have pretty uh, annoying stun spell and probably some damage spells as well. I'm actually gonna use my lightning ring, lightning fire ring on him to do some damage, but I don't have any winch of uh, magic to use on him, so I'm just gonna wizard on wizard melee, at least it's damage. And hopefully he doesn't do anything too annoying. So he got two powers, he's gonna go Crystal Maze. Let's 
see, what was the crystal maze? That was something I have not seen yet. Oh, so it's a... Uh, takes uh, my unit uh, out of the battle for one turn. Great. Come on, troll. Slayer. Those are actually the higher level undeads as well. At least he didn't heal, so that's good. I need, I need to kill... That's not a kill. Good. Did you get the wheel of power? No. Damn. I gotta use the stake on him. How much health do you have? How much damage was the stake? Five damage. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stab him. This is pretty much meant to be used on a... Uh, Undead, and not uh, on these guys. I actually don't know if I can actually use it on him. Guess not. Oh well. Let's use a uh, willpower again. And there's my wizard back. Just in time to be smacked in the head by the zombie. Resurrect. I'm gonna get my ass kicked by, by these guys in here at this rate. So this is where the necromancers are so annoying. They are very, very powerful enemies. Especially if you miss like this constantly. So you have Shadow Bolt. So we are gonna use uh, Shadow Deckers and just spam those. And... Oh, Deflect, great. So that's the ring he has against the spells. Great. Well, we didn't kill him now. He has two hit points. <laughs> or, or one. Two. Great. Let's see. Can I use Amulet of Healing at least? To heal up? Could use a Leap of Fate, but it's not too bad. Good. Let's use the Undead Killing ability. For some reason, the Necromancer is also weak for the Undead Killing spell. And not, not counting as a human or something. I think we may lose the wizard at this rate. Or even mo more people. This may have been a bit too high level high dungeon actually for me. Also, those misses have been really screwing me over. Use a healing on the wizard himself. Two hit points plus three. That's not gonna help too much. Come on, Moroder. Ah. These misses are just killing me. I actually uh, died in the previous dungeon as well, so I've had a uh, pretty bad luck in last two dungeons so far. And when you die in the dungeon, uh, you lose the consumables you used in the dungeon and don't get any loot or experience, which is actually quite bad. Because uh, the next dungeon is going to be even more harder if you don't have money to buy more consumables. So I might not have enough to end this dungeon, actually. Especially if it's a long dungeon. So there goes the wizard. I hope we have a, a healing item to be used on him. Oh, you only have steak. And you guys are pinned. You don't even have a... So we are going to lose the wizard. So you have one turn to go and uh, heal him. But since we have no healing items... Because I will use the only amulet of healing... I cannot go and rescue him, so he's he's goner. He's gonna come back uh, at the end of the dungeon once uh, we are done with the dungeon, but uh, for this dungeon we cannot use him anymore. Uh, if you are playing on the hardcore mode, you will permanently lose uh, characters, which kinda sucks. 
So we go to scroll of fire, and there's a lesser scroll of healing, but actually, I may be able to heal him. Because the combat ended, I can actually equip the scroll of healing, and I can use the scroll on him. That's so lucky. That's just <laughs> dumb luck on my end. Let's also uh, throw this on you. And uh, some of these potions also for some people. Uh, that's your bread. I'm gonna give you the explosive to throw around. And let's give you toughness boots. And you get one of the potions as well. And you get a potion. There we go. So we can now start progressing down here. I basically cut in through two rooms now. And my party is just freaked. Good thing I have the Gravisart with me, with the healing mist, so we can actually do some heals. It's not the best healing spell though. It's only three points uh, for five magic points, so it doesn't heal that much. So it's not that reliable healing. It, but it's better than not having any healer. I really prefer uh, having him with me. Seven magic points, nice. I've used my reserve pretty much only one left, so if we get into a bad situation again, we, we are gonna be really screwed. There's probably gonna be a vampire at the end of the dungeon or some other fairly strong enemy. So we may we may not be able to defeat them, especially if there's some really uh, bad luck spawns. Oops. And there we have the final room. Vampire Troll, 7 Zombies and 3 Giant Spiders. That's actually not too bad. The earlier spawns were much, much more annoying. So I'm gonna leave the Vampire for the Witch Hunter pretty much. Just throw a stake at his face. There we go. <laughs> One shot the Vampire. <laughs> and I actually got the... Achievement called Boom for that. <laughs> oh well, let's uh, kill some undeads. So that's that's good. I'm gonna kill the spiders. So that this is where the death flow comes really handy. So technically he could have killed uh, three enemies in one attack there, but he missed that other attack, so he didn't. Also, I'll show you uh, why the witch hunter is really powerful in the undead dungeons. Once the wizard has moved. It's the bane of the undead ability, basically. Which is just so powerful when you're fighting low-level undeads. So he killed uh, the vampire with the stake. He hit the zombie in there and killed him. And then he's gonna use the willpower for the bane of the undead. And just use a ranged attack to kill all of the zombies. So in one turn I cleared the whole room, pretty much. And there's only one tiny spider left to fight me. Ah, web. The web is actually pretty annoying uh, because uh, you cannot do anything while you're webbed. So this tiny spider can actually be really bad. And also, he got a berserk. He hit everyone around him, which is uh, one of the bad uh, things that can happen with the berserk. It's kind of random. You make it. Nothing, you may get an extra attack, you may get hit in the face by the Berserk. And there we go. So we finished the dungeon, we've got the robes. So there we go. Plus one power, Grave Wizard item, and uh, it's quite expensive. Add to stash, we found some gold. And the quest is complete. You are victorious. And here's the kill screen with the experience. So there we go. <laughs> the Witch Hunter is pretty good on these dungeons. He was missing so much on this dungeon. There we go. So that's how the dungeons work. And then you are back to the map and you can travel to the cities. So I'm gonna 
go back to the work pad, sell some of my loot, buy some more items. Skip the animation there. So we can actually uh, level up the troll slayer quickly as well. So here uh, is the level up. You got it costs thousand gold to train. So there we go. Now he's a true slayer, and he got one more weapon skills, four more hit points, and has a reaction strike. So that surprises him. Interesting. He must have at least one melee attack remaining. So the reaction strike is free. Interesting. So basically, I think it's when someone attacks him, he will uh, attack back if he has attacks left. So it's it's a decent ability, especially with the damage avoidance abilities he has. So pretty good. And uh, he actually got a nice element for plus one hit point for an extra dungeon. But basically, that's a Warhammer quest. It's actually is fairly decent game. On its own, uh, I would maybe prefer playing it on the iOS myself because this would be nice and um, chill, relax, uh, tactical game to play on uh, on on the go when you're traveling or whatever. But I, I like it on the PC as well. Uh, just the issue with the pricing is kind of well, it, it is bad. It, it should be just the deluxe version, be the basic package, and be a bit cheaper than it is at the moment, and have every available content that's in there instead of having these uh, in-app purchases. That you have in the additional content here. So, if you are thinking about buying the game, I would highly recommend uh, just aiming for the deluxe package and do not buy the base game and then buy the stuff separately. And I also would probably wait just a moment uh, if the game goes on sale, like say 50% sale, I think the price is about right in that instead of the current price. But, anyways, that's up to you if you like the game or not and if you want to buy it. But anyways, thanks for watching again, and I'll be seeing you guys on another quick looks on my Twitch channel and on my Let's Plays on the YouTube, so have a fun time, I'll see you guys.